Code review is one of those things every AI coding agent claims to do well. So when I started working on this video, the plan was simple. Test the top tools, compare the results, and give you a clear winner. But the deeper I went, the more I realized it doesn't really work like that. So instead of pretending there's one perfect choice, I'm going to show you exactly what I found, so you can pick the tool that actually fits you. Today we're comparing Cloud Code with the Sonnet 4.5 model, Codex running, GPT-5, and Cursor's BugBot, which uses the Composer model behind the scenes. For each one, we'll talk about quality of the code review, pricing, and what customization you can perform. Let's dive in. In my opinion, the most important factor here is the actual quality of the code review. And if it's that important, and if it can really move the needle for so many developers, you'd expect there to be some kind of benchmark, right? But the reality is, there isn't. There's no official standard you can use to compare different AI coding agents. So I tried going down the research path, I found a few papers and articles that attempt to measure code review performance, but they all focus only on the models themselves. And honestly, just talking about the model is only half of the picture. When it comes to code review, the agent matters just as much because the agent is the one attaching the context, understanding the structure of your project, and feeding the right files to the model. Without that, the results are meaningless. So unfortunately, there's no official benchmark we can rely on. Which means I had to do the only reasonable thing left, test it myself. To run this test properly, I used alldevneeds.com, which is a site full of small developer tools, and I manually injected bugs into the codebase. Then I asked Cursor, Cloud Code, and Codex to run a single code review on the exact same changes. Each tool got its own branch and each one received only one shot at the code review. I didn't want the agents to learn from previous comments or accidentally copy insights from earlier runs, so everything was isolated and clean. Here are the issues I introduced. First, in one of the TypeScript files, I removed the brackets from a function, a small but meaningful bug that should be easy for a good reviewer to catch. Second, in the homepage component, I changed the navigation to point to an endpoint that doesn't exist. Instead of navigating to hash generator, I changed it to hash generators, just one extra letter, but enough to break the flow of the app. And the last one was on the UUID generator page, there's an if statement that checks whether the user tries to copy a UUID before one is generated. If there's no UUID, the function should simply return early, so I broke that logic. I changed the condition to check if the length is minus one, which is always false, meaning the code will always enter the copy function, even if no UUID exists. After adding these bugs, I let each AI agent run its review and compare the results. Let's start with Codex, running the GPT-5 model. To trigger the review, I just commented on the pull request and mentioned Codex directly. The first issue, the missing function brackets, was caught immediately. The second issue, the broken endpoint, was also found, but the third issue, the one with the minus one comparison, didn't get flagged at all. Overall though, I actually liked the style of the comments. They were short, clear, and straight to the point. Next up is Cloud Code with the Sonnet 4.5 model. One thing I really love about Cloud Code is the GitHub Action integration. It runs automatically as part of the review process, right before merging, and it feels like a proper CI step. Claude found all of the issues, but the endpoint bug was a bit strange. Instead of noticing that the endpoint doesn't exist, it warned me that changing it might break behavior and asked me to confirm it. It didn't dig into the code far enough to realize the root wasn't real, which was unexpected. And finally, Cursor's BugBot, running Composer 1 under the hood. To use it, I just typed BugBot run in the PR comments and it kicked off automatically. BugBot caught all the issues and marked every one of them as bugs. And honestly, the UI experience here was excellent. You get two buttons, one to open the fix directly in cursor and another to trigger a background agent right from the web. Super practical. Alright, now let's put everything back into our comparison table. So, to sum it up, the overall quality of code reviews has definitely improved across all three tools in the last couple of months. If you haven't tried using AI for code review recently, it's absolutely something worth adding to your workflow. Now, can I declare a single winner here? Honestly, no. In terms of pure review quality, they're all solid, and they all caught enough issues to be genuinely useful. The differences aren't dramatic enough to crown one tool as the best, but the other factors actually ended up being more surprising. Let's continue with the pricing. First of all, all three tools are only available on paid plans. Codex says it has limits, but they don't actually mention what those limits are. With the plus plan, you can review only your own pull requests. If you want to trigger reviews for other people's PRs, you'll need the pro plan. The Cloud Code also includes AI code review in the pro plan, and just like Codex, they don't say how many reviews you get. And honestly, I get why. It's really hard to define. A pull request might be a tiny variable rename, or it might touch 100 files, so the cost and effort can vary a lot. But Cursor took a different approach. 
With the pro plan, you get a limited number of bug bot reviews, they don't state the number, but you can upgrade to the $40 pro tier, which explicitly gives you 200 reviews per month. That's the only tool here that gives a clear number. Now let's talk customization. Codex lets you trigger a review when the PR is created, or by mentioning Codex in the comments. It works, but it's pretty minimal. Cursor's Bugbot gives you the same options, with one extra. You can run reviews on draft pull request too, which is actually really helpful when you want early feedback. But Claude Code is on a completely different level here. Because the review runs through GitHub Actions, you can basically customize the workflow however you want. You can run reviews on PR creation, on every update, by mentioning Claude in the comments, and you can even choose which contributors should get their PRs reviewed. It's super flexible. So, hopefully this table helps put everything in order and makes it easier for you to decide what fits your workflow. I hope this video gave you some real value. If it did, please consider subscribing and liking, it really helps the channel grow. And if you want to see how I actually debug with AI and save hours of work, check out the video right here. Bye bye.